Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to get BitTorrent working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this is going to be an updated guide for 2022. So if you scroll down, you'll see that YouTube recently added a super thanks button. So if my video helped you today, what you can do is to donate some money and the comment that you write is going to be highlighted so I'll be able to see it. All the money donated is going to help to support the channel and future content that I create. So BitTorrent is a file sharing service and it works by having an uploader upload a file and then lots of people will share it using the BitTorrent protocol. So the way that BitTorrent works is that an uploader will upload a file and then this torrent file actually contains all the information which will allow all of the downloaders to all share the file. Once a downloader has completed downloading the file then they also share with other downloaders too. That means that the more people participating in the BitTorrent network will increase the download speed of the file that's being shared. In order to get this to work we need what's called the BitTorrent client. So the one that I recommend is called QBitTorrent. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description what we're going to do is go to the download page here. I'm going to show you how to download and install it. So we have the Windows version at the top here, which is not relevant to us. We want to scroll down and find the macOS version. So this one's compatible with Intel Macs, but, but also works great on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Here, I'm going to press the DMG button here. And now we're going to select the Qubit Torrent macOS version here. And now this has started the download process. So then we're going to go to Finder and then Downloads. And once we've found our downloads folder here, so now we're going to double click on Qubit Torrent DMG. So now we have the opportunity to drag Qubit Torrent into the applications folder and then let go. So if we go back to Finder and then go to Applications, if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to find Qubit Torrent here. What I want to do is to double click to open it up. So it's saying here it can't be opened. So what we want to do is to hold down the Control key and then click on Qubit Torrent and then press Open. And then we're going to select Open here and that's going to manually allow us to open this. And now we have Qubit Torrent installed. So in order to make use of this, we need to find a torrent file. So the one that I'm going to be using today is a free piece of software from Canonical. It's Ubuntu, which is the Linux operating system, which is a completely free piece of software. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find the torrent files here. So this is Ubuntu. And if you look at the bottom here, we can actually see that it's a .torrent file. I'm going to click on this and this is going to download that torrent file. So if I go to Finder and I go to my downloads, we're going to find the iso.torrent file here. I'm going to double click on this. And then this is automatically associated with Qubit Torrent. And you can see here that the entire file ISO is going to be downloaded to our downloads folder. So if we press OK here, this is going to start the download process. If the file type is not associated correctly, you can also do this within Qubit Torrent. We're going to select the Qubit Torrent window, we're going to select File, and then Add Torrent File. Then we're going to press OK here, OK again, so that it can get access to these folders. And then once that's ready, we're going to click on Downloads. And now we have the torrent file here, which we've downloaded. I'm going to select this one to open. And then we're going to have that same window open again. So it's going to allow us to download this file now. So here we're going to press OK. And basically it started the process of downloading. So what we have on the left here are seeders. So this is the number of people which have the complete file. And then peers are the number of people who are downloading. So by participating in this BitTorrent network, we're part of the peer number here. And basically the number of peers we're connected to here is five. The total number is 29. Here we have 90 seeders we're connected to. And then we have 1,651 in the actual torrent itself. So all of these computers are connected to the same BitTorrent network. And so we're downloading small chunks from each. And this is going at 8.5 megabytes per second. And basically when it completes, it's going to be in our downloads folder by default. So you can actually see that the file we're downloading is already here and it's going to be openable once this reaches 100%. So anyway, that is how you make use of BitTorrent on the Mac operating system on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the other piece of the puzzle is something called magnet links. So magnet links are ways of distributing torrents without actually downloading a torrent file. So no website actually has to host the torrent file. So you actually find these occasionally. They'll kind of look like this. It'll say, get this torrent. When you click on it, Qubit Torrent should open up the same type of torrent window. It'll look a bit like this. It'll say magnet, and then it'll have this long piece of code. What you can do is to right click on the icon, for example, get this torrent, and then copy the link address. And then what you can do is to open up Qubit Torrent, and we can add a new torrent here. And then click this button, add a torrent link. And then you can go ahead and paste the magnet link that you've copied. And when you press download, it's going to go through a similar process as if you've opened up a torrent file itself. And then you'll be able to download that particular file. So anyway, that is a quick crash course in how to use BitTorrent. Obviously, this should be used for legal torrents only. You should not be bypassing any kind of copyright infringing works. Only use it for free software projects only. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe. And I'll so anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.